Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today we're going over basic controls in Buildbox 3. Now, before I begin, don't forget to like and subscribe. I found six articles. I'll leave a link below. So let's get into it. Basic controls. Okay, let's start out by selecting default. Here we go. We got the start and we got the 3D world. Notice here we have some options. We got 3D world adding threshold. This is where things come into the world, such as enemies, objects, scenes, settings for the gravity, the X value. Of course, the Y value is 9.8. What goes up must come down. And then the Z value, which goes into the world. Deletion threshold, background color. Oh, snap. You know, I'm gonna lighten this up, Bob. That could be cool. I'm gonna play with the grid size later. Here's what some documentation would be helpful. I know what time warp is because I have have experience in Buildbox 2. Time warp is the speed at which objects move around in time. A higher time warp can mean that things are moving faster and a lower time warp means things could be moving slower. It could be opposite too. I'm not exactly sure on that. Sub steps. No idea what sub steps is. There's no documentation on this. If you know what sub steps is, please leave a comment. That goes the same for time step. No idea what time step is. It also looks like we have the ability to add multiple opponents here. So I don't know, add touch. So if I go back to the mind map and here we can see touch. Very cool. Not sure how this gets into effect into the world. Adding an action, this probably definitely comes in handy. Adding a point. And here it is again. How does this factor in? Not exactly sure. Monetization, definitely gonna need that. Gotta make money. And then advanced. Advanced is probably where the coolest stuff happens. And as you can see, all on the right. Not sure how that all factors in. So let's not get lost and go into the world. Now, as we can see, everything is gray. Totally looks like Blender now. Not a problem. Let's take a look. First things we wanna pay attention to is light, camera, the cube. Here we got the cube. I'm gonna change these colors a little bit. Contrast colors always grabs attention. Here we can move the camera around if needed. Also move the light source around. But how do we move around? This is super important. Step one, zooming in and out. Zooming in and out is pretty straightforward. We zoom out, whoa, zoom in. So we've got that one down. Next, we need to hit the space bar. So space bar will make the mouse turn into a little hand and you can actually click anywhere. You can grab it and move in that direction. Left click will allow you to move up down, left, right. And you can zoom in, maybe zoom in down here. Left click, up, down, left, right. Take a look around. When you let go of the space bar, little hand goes away and you got arrow pointer. If you wanna move at an angle, you wanna hit space bar and right click. And again, you can still zoom in and out, no problem. Even get into the nitty gritty and then zoom out, look at different angles, very cool. Just like Buildbox 2, Buildbox 3 makes it super easy to duplicate objects. You got the W to copy up on top, D to copy to the right, S to copy down, and let's go ahead and use the selection tool to select all the four cubes and hit A to copy everything to the right. It copied everything to the right, but some of the objects are on top of other objects and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and grab this red arrow and move it to the right and perfect let's look at that angle that angle look good maybe zoom in a little bit more the cool thing is is you can actually select all the cubes so let's go ahead and select all the cubes oops i accidentally made one of the cubes the parent cube and the other cube and the other cubes child cubes but we're not going to go into that today so let's go ahead and select all these cubes and now i'm on the left side selecting command and this is only possible because I have the select tool. I'm curious if I hit A, I wanna select all these tools. I hit D. Okay, so it doesn't copy all of them. The ASWD doesn't copy the way it should be. So when you're copying, doesn't work properly. Just go old school, hit copy, paste, and okay. Let's just go ahead and skip that. Now, I wanna select all these objects, make them smaller. This is the move tool, the rotate tool, so I can rotate the object. And then here we have the scale tool. Scale it like this or like this, but this is not what I am trying to do. 
what I'm trying to do is scale down the cubes while keeping them in the same position. So let me control Z. To do that, I can go over to the right over here and just adjust the size accordingly. It's like one of these cubes didn't get adjusted or did get adjusted, but it's looking kind of weird. I bet you this cube is still the parent cube. So if I delete it, everything will get deleted here. Oh, and BuildBox just crashed. Okay, BuildBox crashes, this happens. Be sure to save your work all the time. Now BuildBox 3 still has bugs, man. Literally save every five, 10 minutes. If you don't do it, then everything be gone. The scale tool with this one, and let me show you what I was trying to do before. As you can see here, you can scale the object, which is really cool to be able to scale multiple objects at once in this manner. But again, not what I want. So let me control Z twice. Since they are all their own individual objects, I can go to over here, hit 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Look at that beautiful object in their original coordinates. And from here, copy, paste. Now the cube objects on top of these objects. Let me move to this angle over here. I'm gonna hit this rotate button. And I believe, I believe it's the red one. Hold on, let me take a look. Okay, I wanna move the red over here. So grab this selection tool, hold down shift. Maybe that's the thing. Look at that. As you can see, it's not a perfect angle. Let's see if I can rotate it on the Z axis to 90. No, maybe here 90, no. Okay, so let me go ahead and make it zero. I'm gonna move it to 2D and then move it to Z axis. This I think is the key here. Okay, so look, negative zero, zero, and I will go up here and actually change it to 90. What I want is, and I was hoping it'd be like a perfect, it's not. That's okay, I can easily select all these cubes, move it up, x90 and then like all these cubes and move it to x90 you see how i'm changing it to x90 and both of them are 90 but it's kind of weird yeah not exactly sure what's going on got it exactly the way i want and that this is just a test as we saw before it crashed i don't want that to happen again so we did the move tool we did the rotate tool we did scale tool this is the multi-tool this one is multi-complicated so we're not going to jump into that one just yet now let's go back to the documentation and see what is next select tool selecting everything probably one of my most favorite and most useful moving objects around on the x y z coordinate rotation scaling this is super important and just for an example let me grab one of these cubes and scale it we can see what it would look like if it was like this Take it like that. Now the more you play and move around within BuildBox, the easier it'll get, the more familiar. My biggest problem is that I'm not always in BuildBox every day and to get used to the movement, you kind of want to be in it at least an hour every day. Ooh, camera view. This button is super important. While this may look cool right here, it is not what the player sees. You want to see what the player sees and see if you like that view. If not, change accordingly. Oops. So here's the camera. Now instead of like moving around to try to figure out what exactly the camera thing, you just click this little button over here. You can be checking out the shadow over here and say, hey, I wonder what the, what the player will see. And boom. From here, you can move the camera like this. And if I needed to rotate it, I can select the rotation tool and move the camera over. It looks like control Z is not possible. So be careful when moving around because if you adjust it and you don't like it, then you will be stuck with it. In my game, maybe I want the shadows facing towards the player. Get out of here, zoom out, and grab the sun. What do we have? Sun, we have the X, Y, Z position this is the x position going left and right that at zero the z position going into and away and actually we're going to want the z position further back y position going up and down i think the y position is good to go and if you look at the sun oops that this is where the sun ray is pointing so we want to take that and move it and rotate it here now let's get a better angle here say i want the sunlight facing like this. 
It's like we can change the light color. Let's see how this works. So the sunlight is pink. Interesting. It just kind of gives it a weird look. I'm going to hit cancel. So originally it's white. We change it to something like this. This just looks a little weird. Not what I'm going for, but good to know that it exists. This. Okay. Intensity. Ooh, super intense. I wonder if I can do 1.25. Ambient color. Not sure what this does. Ambient usually means like a background soft undertone. So maybe make it a little bit brighter and check out the camera view. See if there's a difference here. Maybe in the shadows, really hard to tell. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it alone. Shadow distance. Don't know what this does. Let's go ahead and change it to zero. Nothing. 250 nothing maybe it only affects it in the game okay so here we can see that there's no shadow the shadow distance definitely is affected when you select the preview mode 2500 was the original let's make it 5000 let's double it and preview okay looks interesting i'm not sure if that's different than the 2500 though oh it is okay look at that so 2000 1000 500. Wait, what's the difference between 1,000? Oh, over there. 200. Okay, so 200, it just disappears. 300, 400. So 400, it almost goes polygon like. 500 is very bare bones. Stuff like this may have an effect on CPU usage. Definitely important to pay attention to the little pieces because they may come in handy later. Shadow intensity. This is at a decimal, so usually it'll be from 0.01 to 1. Let's check it out. 1. Oh, interesting. I'm going to change the shadow distance back to 2500. This was 0.65, refresh, a little bit lighter, and it does what it says. Is it just changes the intensity of the shadow. See what else is happening. Collision shape editor. So let's add a shape. Cool beans. Uh, the brightness of everything is kind of hurting my eye, so let's go ahead and change back to one. Let's go to the asset library. Now here's a bunch of different assets that you can add. Select the torus, add shape to library. Oh, added it twice on accident so now let's go ahead and grab it put it here select the move tool because then we can move where's the camera okay so the camera is over here let's go ahead and rotate it accordingly specifically 90 degrees and change the z to 90 as well cool change the color let's go green now here's the mesh it doesn't have a texture Let's go into the into the settings of the torus. So here we can see it has no physics. So let's go ahead and give it physics. The collision shape is not a cube. It's a torus. And torus doesn't exist, so we're going to need to select mesh. Now, it doesn't have a mesh, so we need to go in and select a mesh. Here we can see the object mesh here. What a mesh does is it's like a wrapping paper around the object and that wrapping paper becomes the shape of the object. And why is that important? Well, when you see the object, see it just went through the ground. We don't want that. Let's see it again. Now, why is that happening? Well, it's happening because the object now has physics and all these properties. It's got a position, a rotation, a scale, a, the type dynamic. Here we got static. So if it was static, it would stay in place. But because it's dynamic, it falls. As you remember, the 3D world here has a negative Y gravity. Because it falls, it falls and hits the ground. Now let's go into the ground. Now the ground doesn't have physics. So that's why the object falls through it. But if we give the ground physics, let's take a look at what happens. It gets all these properties. And the ground is essentially kind of like a, a cube, the type of dynamic. What happens is the ground now falls too. So we need to change the type to static and now it will stay in place. It looks like we can adjust the friction and the bounce, but let's not get into it. Let's just make sure everything works and perfect. Now we can see it stays where it's supposed to. And actually, I kind of want to move the to 90. Yeah, perfect. Here we can change the collision group. We can make it a platform. When it comes to the torus, we can select here, which is the collision shape editor. The collision shape editor brings out all the things we saw before in the actual node of the asset. So here, all these items now exist. We need to select torus and torus and 
start, which is the property. And again, we can change it to static, but let's keep it as dynamic. Have a mass. I feel like we can adjust these numbers. It's hard to see any kind of effect because, oh, that, did that happen before? So was that point one, what happened? Yeah, it looks like it just kind of stopped. So adding a bigger mass to it. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Maybe even increase the friction. And this is where you just play around with stuff. I'm gonna change it to 2.5. I think it increases friction, maybe slow it down. And I wanna add a bounce of 50. Maybe that's too much. Ooh, okay, that is too much. So let's go 10. Oh, I, I did one. No, I did 10. Very fun stuff. We got the position factor, rotation factor, always active. I'm not sure what this means. Probably certain actions you can implement to turn it on or off once you get further into building a game. This was super helpful. Thank you so much, Eric Jusko. All right, well, I think that's it for basic controls. If you've enjoyed following along as I go through the basic controls for BuildBox 3, don't forget to like let me know your first impressions of BuildBox 3. What are your difficulties, challenges, or what would you like to see? Until next time, take care.